Now our next guest has explored some of the world's spookiest paranormal locations on Most Haunted, of course. She's overcome the I'm a Celeb jungle and rubbed shoulders with no less than Kylie Minogue, Silla Black on Blue Peter. The CV. We might have to talk CV for half an hour. Woman. Good morning, Yvette Fielding. It's lovely to have you here. I am absolutely thrilled to be here. We we're just talking, last time we spoke, it was on a computer yep, screen, screen on Zoom. But here I am with you Great guys. And it's so nice because honestly, all morning, and just there a minute ago, you're like, you were like, what's your favourite most haunted place in mm -hmm. Ireland? If you're, like, Lucy, your wife is really into oh, this. Oh, well, yeah. Into most haunted. She yeah, watched it lovely. all the time. Like, what, what, what is it that people, people get, they love it. Like they're really yeah. addicted fans to that show. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like a roller coaster ride, isn't it? You sort of get on. I mean, I hate roller coaster rides. <gasps> and you get on and you're sort of like half, you know, hanging in the air like they like to do. And you look down and you're thinking, why am I here? Why am I doing this? And then you do it and then you come off and you're like, oh, that was great. <laughs> and it's the same with ghost hunting and the paranormal. You know, your adrenaline is going through the roof. You know, you're in a really scary place like a prison, for example, you're on your own in a haunted cell and then you go to open the door and you're locked in. That's happened to me. And then you start hearing scratching on the walls and then the bed might suddenly shift or move on its own. And you're like, <laughs> I'm so frightened, but you're getting that on camera. And then when you, you know, help, help, and then they come and let you out. And then it's like, oh, wow. And then you look back at the footage and you just think, wow, look what we've caught. Look, we've, we've caught some really good paranormal activity. So you want to go back and do it again. I mean, because it, it, it's the 20th anniversary yes, of this Most year. Haunted, yeah. which is incredible. And, and my wife was addicted to it, loves it, wants to come, come back. I mean, in Ireland, have you, have you a scariest, like for people in the lead up to Halloween, where do they need to go if they want to see um, some activity? Well, we went to a few places. Um, we went to Charlieville Forest Castle. Then we went to Let Castle in, I think it's count in Offaly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that, um, I remember the story of that. There was a family that lived in Lep Castle. And um, the, the father was doing odd jobs around the house, uh, around the castle. Uh, and uh, he was up his ladder and he got pushed off by yes. something. I think he broke his leg. And they talk about this really malevolent, awful entity in Poltergeist that's in Lep Castle. And I remember being really excited and going there. And it is a really creepy, creepy place. And I'd love to go back there yeah. because at the time, um, we were sort of fledgling ghost hunters. We didn't really kind of, we were finding our feet. But now I'd love to go back. <laughs> I reckon we'd get some really great stuff there. Because with, I suppose, with the cameras and people are always, people watch it for it. There are, there are funny moments oh, as yes. well of yeah. stuff that happens when it comes to ghost hunting. Like you've been, you were showing me clips earlier on of, was it Derek Cora talking about Mary Love and something that we can't really say <laughs> on, the, on the television. <laughs> like there is... Oh, but that's the great thing about Most Haunted because it's real, because it, our emotions are real. And that's what happens if you guys went out on a ghost hunt. One minute you'd be screaming and crying and then the next minute you'd both be absolutely falling about laughing. I mean, there have been a couple of moments, I will admit to you, it's not very ladylike, but with the fear, <laughs> you have to wear your big girly pants. <laughs> and sometimes, <laughs> and it's not a paranormal noise, will happen well you're all <laughs> falling about laughing because somebody said did you hear that did you hear that and you go actually it was me i'm so scared you know that's happened quite a few times a few, ghost, a few ghostly pops here <laughs> and there <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, I didn't expect that to be one. To be fair, Maureen, I don't know how sometimes. you would cope with it. I mean, you get scared, <laughs> not for the, the ghostly parks, but I mean, you get scared I if do. anybody, you know, like if you're they in a, a pitch habit, black They have a habit here of, of coming up behind me when there's 25 people in the room and going, ooh, Alan does it all the time. And I, I you're freak. You're on the ceiling. I, I do, I freak out. Yeah. But it's fun. Like, it's, it's great fun uh, to watch all of these things. Thanks for talking about my ghostly parks. Um, <laughs> But you, you've you done ghost hunting with, you know, yes. kind of famous faces. Yeah. Boyzone did it. They Boyzone did. Boyzone and Louis Watt. Yes. And it was very funny because when they sort of first arrived, I picked, it was for ITV, and I picked them up in um, <clears throat> a London taxi. And they were really cocky, like, yeah, whatever, this is a load of rubbish, you know, ghosts, it's a TV show. You know, who's going to be chucking stuff? Who's going to be moving the scenery? Who's going to be... No, it's actually real. Oh, what a load of rubbish. By the end of it, there were tears. I'm not kidding. And Louis, uh, there's a brilliant shot of Louis Walsh. We're in Edinburgh in the underground, uh, the, the, 
loads of tunnels there. Yeah. And Louis Walsh, there's a wonderful shot of him actually jumping, clutching his pearls and trotting like a pony <laughs> and screaming so loudly, going, that's enough, that's enough now. And honestly, these big lads, you know, and one funny story was, um, I think it was Keith, I can't remember, said to me, do you use anything for protection? <laughs> and I said, well, I said, this necklace here. Uh, I said, I do have, um, um, and it's a tiny little heart, and I said, I do have the ashes of my father in here. And he said, tiny man, was he? Which just made me fall about laughing. <laughs> and, uh, so now I always say, I have some of my dad's ashes that in this necklace. Really uh, yeah, so they were really intrigued and everything, but very dubious. But yeah. by the end of the investigation, they were really on board, particularly Stephen. He was really, um, he was very much, um, you know, I want to find out more you know and when stuff was happening he was absolutely bowled over by it, you know let's keep going you know it's four in the morning now we, we need to, to we need to wrap no 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 let's keep going let's keep going yeah it was wonderful yeah yeah listen you've continued with the most haunted <laughs> Perhaps now. <laughs> did you not scream too? Oh, I did, oh, yeah. You yeah. did. I think I need to go get changed. You need, uh, to, you need to replay that in slow motion. <laughs> Good. Uh. With sound. Uh. You knew that was coming about you. I did. swear I didn't know. I even anyway, jumped. What I was, what I was <laughs> trying to say. You've got into children's books. I have, yes. And this, <laughs> this, and this is book number two, The Ripper of Whitechapel. I mean... <laughs> Jack the Ripper. I know, Fair I know. Play oh. For children. Well, young adults, really. So it's the second in the series of the Ghost Hunter Chronicles. The first book was called The House in the Woods, yeah. where three 13-year-olds decide that they're going to, come on, let's do a Ouija board. And they find this abandoned house in the middle of Epping Forest, and they suddenly discover the spirit world and something follows them home. And so they begin this foray into, into ghost hunting and hence the second book, um, they have to go and help um, some ghostly children I'm... who are being followed by none other than the ghost of Jack, Jack the, the Ripper. Ripper. Yeah. I love this. I mean, even like you look at the, the people who've written, <laughs> talked about yes. in the back. Keith Lemon, when I grow up, I want to be a ghost hunter. <laughs> After reading this book, I now feel fully qualified. <laughs> Matt Lucas, I'm too scared to read this. Paula Grady, I mean, it, it, I mean that is some list of names. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's fun to have it. Like, I remember reading Point Horror books when I was like, yes, you know, 10, yeah. 11, 12. It's good to, like, it's fun for I kids know. to I'm be what, it, it is. And before I started writing them, I thought, oh, you know, how scary should I make mm. this? And so uh, I was in a bookshop and there was a, a, a mum with two 13-year-old lads, two brothers. I said, can I talk to you? You know, they, they were in the sort of horror section. And I sat, we sat down and I said, I'm writing these books. Said, how scary would you like it to be? And one of them went, I want to shake under the duvet. I was <laughs> like, OK. I used to love You want a ghostly parp. Goose, a ghostly parp. Goose parp. Goosebumps. No so that was a book I used to read back then. without a ghostly parp. If you're feeling, thank you so much. Thank That's you so much for having me. I will never forget that moment. And book number two, The Ripper of Whitechapel. To be honest with you, I think... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to forget that moment in time soon either. <laughs> Thank you for being involved. In I'm meant to be a rugby player. I'm not meant to be I've tough. Lost, I'm not meant to... I've lost 45 years. Yeah, you're meant to be real yeah, tough. To be he tough. did go like this. He did. Oh, I did. Went, uh, 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 uh. What are we going to do today, Yvette? It's been a pleasure having you. Oh, Thank you so no. much. Thank you for having Now. Me.